He's been there a lot, yeah. a lot more than me as well. Yeah. But, I'm sorry, yeah. I burn you back for Mike. That's all. I'm just getting you back for Mike. It's okay. We all love Mike. It's all good fun. <laughs> no, they just the the nerves definitely are gonna come. But Alliance is a team that's been here many times before. Navi as well. They can, I'm sure they can just push it out of their minds. I'm just, I'm just intrigued it. by how how do you block all of that out? Is it, it just it just looks impossible from the outside's point of view. Well, when you do it so many times over and over again, it sort of becomes second nature. Like this is like Fog said, this is not the first time these teams have been in this position, elimination match, especially against each other, yeah. with tons of fans around. The booths, I mean, you can definitely hear the crowd. But, you know, at some point, it just becomes routine. Okay, draft is underway. Well, there's three picks already as well. Uh, quick picks. Ooh. Bounty Hunter Batrider this time round for Na'Vi, and a slider on Alliance. Things are being mixed up this time round. Big change up. Yep, Murana also banned out. That's been a, a very popular go-to for Na'Vi recently. Mm -hmm. um, pretty consistently general playing that in the offlane. But Bounty Bat is pretty scary. Has really good roaming potential. Great initiation as well, so it's going to be a, even harder for Alliance and High Ground this game. Very interesting. What a surprise! Though. Like the bounty, yeah, I'm shocked. Definitely expected it, but the bounty wasn't really so contested in the last two games, was it? Uh, I don't even really. No, uh, not, not so much. Right? Hmm. I think we've seen bans for it. Yeah. But not not early bans no. anyway. It wasn't banned in this series, not at least the uh, the first game. And now it's picked in the first two. Very, hmm. very interesting approach. I guess they want to change it up a bit. I feel like this is play, playing, playing to their playstyle. Yeah. The, um, the brood has been. The brood has been. Definitely banned. the brood ban. Absolutely. No, no more admiral brood mother. That was one possibility there. Is if if they open slaughter and their opponents take bounty, then they can't take brood in the first phase. And on top of that, if if the game is anything like game one, then track's going to help offset that gold deficit they have by fighting all the time. So if they play like game one and they have a bounty on their team and they get the equal amount of kills, they're going to win that game. Yeah, I, I agree. That's a that's a great point. In both games, you've seen Navi constantly trying to take the fight to Alliance. And in game one, they, they sacrificed a lot of farm and a lot of CS for it. But you're right, Bounty does make up for that. And we do have the switch up this time too. Navi is now on Radiant. They play two games back to back on Dire. Now we do have Alliance on the Dire, and they first pick the Slardar. Or, well, second pick the Slardar. That's that's a good advantage to have on Dire, because easy Roche. Yeah. You saw it multiple times last game. Mm. Except for those two. We see it. In, we saw it in the previous series as well with Cole versus Liquid. Liquid gained a lot of momentum despite being pressured early by Cole. By just they got back into that game by being able to take Roshans. He's coming back. Slardar and Dire. Dire advantage. Dire advantage. Dire boys. We did comment on it earlier as well. We were like, oh, you know, do you think that that the Dire actually makes such a big difference? And I think in the last game it really did. You know, yeah. They were constantly able to just go for that Roshan. It, it was very weird to watch that game because I was like, Alliance is way ahead. I'm pretty sure they're going to win this game. And they just got a Roche, and I didn't. it didn't phase me at all. I was like, well, they're way ahead. They still get easy Roches, but whatever. Like, that that was how far ahead I felt. And they just got Roches so easily. I like this. They ban the Dazzle, and they take the Venge. So this is, I feel like this is kind of a deny pick from from uh, from Alliance, because now they don't have the swap, the easy swap to get rid of the Batrider Lasso. They don't have that extra amp damage. They don't have, of course, the aura that comes out from the Venge, which helps you gain more physical damage, gives you more objective taking. It's really good synergy with Slardar as well, more minus armor. Uh, there's still a Life Stealer in the pool, actually. Although Alliance is slightly more covered against it due to having Slar. Bench kind of works too, though, as does Batrider. Yeah. But uh, I do like, I would like a, a Life Stealer pick for, for Navi. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, it, it works so well with our lineup, and Life Stealer is great with track movement speed as well. And now we do get good Infest Bomb on Bat or Bounty. Yeah, both of those heroes are great Infest Bombs. And yeah, like Charlie was saying that. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. We're going back to Navi from a couple from a couple weeks ago, a couple maybe even a month ago now. I'm a big fan like of this it. pick. I'm a big, big fan of this pick. The Ventura works well with Lycan, and it's... Isn't its win rate in this tournament ridiculous? Yeah, uh, the Lycan? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pertaining a lot to, obviously, you know. To, to Liquid. The but, Matumba. But, but I, I think they've shown that that hero is, like, is, is great. It's not just Liquid playing it. It's also that hero does so much for your team. And I have to play the young Nahas role right here. <laughs> 
in the Navi with Lycan have an 81% win rate right now. So pretty absurd. And it plays really well around their style. You know, how really how is very good in the laning phase, and then they're able to take this is basically their objective hero. So I really I really like this pickup, and it's, it fits it fits the Chira's style where he's like that that mid game eccentric just run at you. Yeah. There's also that worry if Bounty Hunter doesn't have a great laning stage, doesn't hit fast level six, Lycan this time can just go into the jungle, and then Lycan uh, Bounty Hunter can take the lane. You don't really always want to have your bounty showing so much in the lane, but yeah, if he does struggle a bit throughout right. the laning phase, he's able to take that as one of his possibilities. So yeah, I really like that and I agree. Now we do see the Lycan, or the Alliance, <laughs> Alliance picking up Phoenix here. Yeah, which has seen quite a bit of action today and has improved its win rate. It was uh, teetering down towards the 23% win rate before today. It's now back up to 333 uh, usually, third, third most picked hero of the tournament so far as well. So very popular still. Usually, when we've seen Phoenix oh. have success, it's when it's comboed with something. And Navi does the respect and bans out the puck, and instantly we get the Queen of Pain for S4. And then Windrunner banned out for it's, Dendi. It's a good co-op game actually. They, there's pretty little lockdown on Navi, just uh, Venge stun and lasso. I like Phoenix here as well. Uh, they'll combo up after slaughter initiations. It's good against strength heroes. Does the crowd what want like a Dendi yeah, Pudge is, or something? Yeah, what this guy's getting rowdy. Is there an emergency? Dendi Pudge mid. As much as hype as that would be, I'd be really surprised if they picked it here. Me too. Already had 92 different heroes picked. A record at Valve events. There is still the Invoker. There is still the Invoker. There's someone else about to come on as well. Completely it's, untouched this this series. It's a good Invoker game. Something range would be really good to deal with the eggs. Right now, they don't have a lot of good egg solutions. A little bit of anti mobility, maybe an Orchid carrier. He's played Marana mid. Oh, wait, it's, it's, it's saying band, it's band, band, yeah, right? Yeah, there is the Invoker. There's the last hero left there, and it fits, synergizes really well with their heroes. Really good okay. pushing, good at ganking and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Crowd seem happy with that as well. Is Charlie happy with that? Yeah, I, lo I, I like it a lot. Okay. I, I'm going to go with Navi just because I love General on Batrider. And because you went with your predictions for 2-1? No, I don't care, about, Nothing I don't care about my predictions whatsoever. <laughs> I, I think I like Navi's draft better here, mm. definitely. Um, Alliance got to shut down the bounty. Yeah. Okay. You've heard from the analysts. Time to move on for our third and final game of the night. It's the final match of the night as well. Let's head back to the commentary desk for Alliance versus Navi Game 3. Not the first time that we've seen a Navi Alliance series go the distance and hopefully not the last. Ben, who are you favoring in this game? I must say I like Navi's lineup a lot more. All right. Well, that seems like a clean sweep for Navi as far as the analysts go. But analysts have been wrong before. We'll see if they're on again as we get underway. It's Navi versus Alliance, game three. Let's go. And here we are. The last time we'll be seeing this map today. Some really signature picks coming out for, for the new Navi. Ben, they, they've done a ton of work with the Bounty Hunter. Already at length, the panel talked about the general Batrider. You see the DRL players. Lycan. The DRL Lycan, probably the biggest thing. Going back to Dream League, they won like eight, like six or seven matches in a row, I want to say, in almost every single one. He had a Lycan, easy stop. But I heard a crowd cheer for the Bulldog Nature's Prophet sitting in base, sending out Trinity's Scout as four on his signature Queen of Pain. So it's coming out on both sides. You do not ban Nature's Prophet <laughs> when playing versus Alliance because you think you can beat it. Will this man prove the hero? Here, Memer. A really good shot. <laughs> I got a chuckle out of you. I wonder how you've that's changed. Gonna end. You've you didn't complete it. You don't know how it's going to end. Yeah, well, that's that's how all stories go. Sometimes the ending changes. Let's see how the runes go for now. 15 seconds and counting until they will appear. It's going to be a standard laning setup, and I want to say. Very importantly, this is the first game in the series where Alliance is not aggressive tri laning. That is a, a big difference from the past two. Every time I think I've seen them do it, they had Rubik and Dazzle, and that was banned out in the second phase for Navi. Vent would have been appropriate. They did it with uh, Keeper of the Light yesterday oh. uh, versus Mineski, but yeah, hmm. generally has been. So S4 will take the Queen of Pain mid, was a, a staple hero for him back when he was on Secret. Uh, often would even play it in the safe lane with Arteezy going mid. 
And Dendi on his signature invoker. Hasn't played it too much over the past couple years. But already, looks like he takes the point at Quas. What do you think as far as the invoker build? It's pretty early, but do you favor Quas Wex or Quas Exhort here? It seems like he's doing Quas Wex because of uh, the early Quas. Generally, you get Exhort at level 1 if you're doing Quas Exhort so you can last hit. I think the Quas is much better at handling the Slardar and the Queen of Pain. The Orchids also extremely good versus the Phoenix uh, and the Rubik in the early game. I am slightly worried about them scaling later. It's not like they have the General Murano uh, with the Axe upgrade. Dendi going in here with the cold snap and doesn't have the Howl damage as well to work with in the mid lane. So you can see some good teamwork here. As soon as the Howl gets popped, he immediately throws in the cold snap, tries to get in that bit of chip on S4. It's some physical damage, even if he goes Quas Wax. And yeah, there you go. Dendi does take the point of Wax, so a big decision to be made for Navi is now, at least for the time being, on the table. It's the ward battle rages in the mid lane, but Seneko able to keep Alliance deprived of sentries here, so it's going to force the Phoenix to stick around, lest S4 get overrun. This lane, mid lane, back and forth early on, a 2v2. Thus far, we see free farm for the Lycan down towards bottom, up in the safe lane. Uh, some aggression out of the Batrider who may end up going down here. He will fall in the end. General brought down as Alliance chase him out. EGM and Loda combining, so a crucial first blood. Slowing down the bat. And doesn't look like there's any time to stack too much for him. He does have that double large camp Ake and Seneko around the pit. Ake gonna drop just a freebie for Seneko to get the bounty room, but was it worth it? Yeah, very slow on the die there. He, it, it is on cooldown, but just not casting in time. Seneko, I think interrupting the first one with the... Actually, it has no cast point, so can't interrupt it, but that was strange. Yeah, so overall, an interesting start to this game. A little bit more action than what we've seen in some previous. The double damager now gets scooped up by Art Style. Has been occupying the bottom lane, looking to ensure the Lycan is off to a hot start. So far he has been, but they have not dealt with Bulldog. Level three and a half, Ben. Mm -hmm. Basically, as close to a dream start for an offlane prophet who's not getting help as you'll ever see, but it's coming at the cost of S4 mid. Ooh. Seneko trying to go in there. Didn't quite have the burst damage to kill him off, but gotta be careful about that cold snap into Tornado. Which he he does have the two points in, in Quas now. I don't think they're too worried about the Mage Project. Oh, they, they are the going with hurt. the cold snap. Shuriken and. Oh, Dendi. Didn't go for the Tornado. No mana. I think the Nature's Prophet will be handled pretty easily by a Bounty Hunter. Even if they don't have the Bounty Hunter to scout them out, they have the Wolves. And Bat Rider also poses a very large threat to a farmed MP. But then again, it is Bulldog's MP. Very good at farming around without dying and scouting out with his Treants to look for those threats. Yeah, they have a lot of heroes to hunt profit later on. The, the Wave of Terror for some vision, the Invoker for the Tornado, and obviously you mentioned the Bounty Hunter, the Bat. It's not going to be easy for Bulldog, but he's done it against all odds before. He is farming well here. So too is Loda up top on the Slaughter. Not only gets the, the first blood, but gets a lot of farm after that as Seneko. Drives Bulldog a bit back out of the lane. We will see a bit of a response forced out from Navi, who aren't having the easiest time dealing with this dual lane. And if things get dire for Bulldog, he can always retreat back to the woods. Snake are still pursuing Ake all over the map. The, swo the swoop's already been committed here. Doesn't have an Icarus dive ready. Snake looking to run him down with those daggers. Doesn't completely commit for a kill or anything, but putting pressure out everywhere he goes. And Ake definitely looking like it's going to be an underleveled Phoenix to get this game started. In general, doing a very large stack right now. Seven Napalm stacks on this huge camp and no real pressure. They are free farming the Slaughter as a trade, but considering that he's already died once, General really needs this catch-up gold, and Seneko's getting a lot of experience out of it too, Ben. And Rubik was scouting out the other stack, seeing how large it is. It is only a two stack, but they would love to get their hands on that with the Queen of Pain. We are going to see a very fast level six on Seneko, unless something, unless something disastrous happens to him. This bounty hunter is going to have a great game, uh, at least through the early stages. Also, Ark's now getting his levels here, already four. So the Navi supports getting a ton out of the laning stage. EGM keeping right behind Bulldog to 
make sure that there's not an attempted maneuver. Here comes the rotation, though. Arta with the instant TB, but EGM ready there with the lift. Alliance bring in three. They get the kill on the vent. And they do this while the Slardar is still unchecked, already level six, free farming top, already forcing out a glyph. General rotates into the lane, but General is level three. With the bounty hunter leeching the experience, the trade off is he is looking rather under leveled. Yeah, not really that close to his Link Tiger. As long as he keeps stacking, it'll be fine. Dendi looks like he's building an urn after his early phase. And yeah, Suniko, as you mentioned, I think his levels are more important. Suniko with the courier snipe. He shoots, he scores. An easy pick there for Suniko. He can move in onto S4 potentially. Uh, not gonna not gonna go for it. S4 actually blinks on Dendi. Will they get punished? Rupix there. Alliance have the plus one, but so too is the Batrider. Unfortunately, it's a very underleveled and very underwhelming Batrider at this stage. Suneko's doing more at this point. Even Artstyle getting involved. Everybody mid. And nobody dies. Thought EGM almost had Bounty Hunter there. He didn't pop the dust when he was near the Ancients. Not sure if Suneko was hiding around there or maybe holding up for Dendi's Ghost Walk instead. As far as getting handed on this game, even the Wolves. Now we don't like him very much. Yeah, he's managed to pick up a couple of runes though. There will certainly have him out. Arcane now, DD. Definitely handling the pressure well thus far. So what are we going to see out of Loda, do you think, this go? S4. Already has Aki there, ready in reserve. He likes his Vanguard a lot. On do you have thoughts on that versus Armlet, I guess, being the most direct alternative option and then versus just like a straight blink this game? The games I've seen him go the Vanguard, it's been against some sort of summons, like Beastmaster, this game will be Lycan, the Invoker isn't Quasilex, so no Force Spirits, uh, but I think in general, Armlet is just way stronger than the Vanguard right now. Bulldog, this is a really bad kill if he gives it up, and they are moving on to him, goes for the Sprout, catches up Suneko, the Crush is on two, Floda was ready for it, Navi overextending, they give both up, Alliance, bring the trap. Beautiful stuff from the Swedes, and Bulldog prances away, swirls around the one, playing to the crowd a bit. Very good sprout by him, too. I thought he might have been able to trap himself inside, but... Great TP by Loda, level 6, picks up the plus 1 on the Bounty Hunter with the Amp. And so now gives up the lane, is up towards top, our Batrider being pressured here. The Sunray's going, they've lifted him up, General dead again! This Batrider... Fog talked about how much General has done in past games, but he's just not getting the start he's accustomed to. Now they need Denny to get involved. He's Quas Wex. He has his earned time to get some kills on him, especially with his other lanes not doing so hot. So where do you focus your attention? Slardar with a Vanguard seems like a difficult kill. I think as long as you just make maneuvers, you don't even need to get killed. You just need to relieve pressure from the Batrider because he needs to farm his plane. He's only level 4 right now. He needs to get back in this game very quickly. Dark style is now under the watchful gaze of Ake with the amp damage. At the same time of Lads is picked up by the Lycan. Alternatively, they can wait until uh, Bounty Hunter gets level 6. So Sineko's just parked on bottom. Won't need his tome to get level 6. And can get some kills there. Phoenix still pretty under level. Might be a pretty good target for them. And no Blink Dagon or Slardar means they don't really have to f fear about Alliance is a uh, very deep dive unless Nature's Prophet TP's in, but he typically doesn't do it this early. Yeah, they do get the follow-up amp damage out. Oh, the tower does get denied by Deyara. Nice rotation there. TP'd in to summon the wolves and scout for the potential backstab at the tower, then even managed to deny it. Great micro from him. Limiting the income here for Alliance S4. Able to blink out before Dendi can do much to him. Still a quiet game for the Invoker. And with the Batrider having the start he did, it's, it really does seem like it falls to Dendi. General is closing out on the blink though. He's hit level six. He does kill the lasso right away. So the lasso coming. The Alliance are a pretty good counter gank team with the NP. Uh, even the Phoenix Sunray to turn things around. The Queen of Pain, very mobile and has a lot of burst. And EGM's looking to kill. He has Magic Missile already stolen. And surely gonna steal a good spell from Invoker. Did Yara smoked up with Suneko? Gets the tornado. They're trying to make a move here on bottom. Bulldog has died. 
or almost died once, I should say. Will this time be any better? They move in on him again. Ditya Raj chasing after him. The damage will come fast and furious if they commit inside the Sprout, but they're not going to. They just immediately bait out TPs, try to one away. Oh no, S4 committing the ultimate. Unable to net a kill. This time it's Elias who overreact and don't get much out of it. Man, that was a very quick reaction out there from Alliance. Major Prophet does not have that much HP, only 900 yet. He was still able to survive that gank coming out from Na'Vi. However, it will be General's time. Ten and a half minutes, blink, no smoke in sight for him. But ready to use that lasso. So where does he go? Nobody showing top. Really the only vision for the Radiant is towards that mid lane. I but... think slowing down Bulldog would be wise for them, especially because he's so close to his Midas. They know that he hasn't picked up Maelstrom in his recent games and likely to continue his trend of hand up Midas. Alliance do move into the pit now. They have amp damage, they have trance to tank. This will be a reasonably fast clip for the road. Let's see if the Wolves got it out. They will finish a camp out right now. Did Ross sitting pretty low on mana, maybe not wanting to load the rest of his pull on it. Oh, they're moving towards the pit. That Rider leading the charge here. General marshalling his forces. Roshan still at around half HP. Sentry outside the pit though. Good scouts and Aiko. There's the blink initiation. Drags Loda up onto the cliff, keeping the Slardar out of this picture for a long time. Loda won't be able to contribute much, and that will put a pretty big halt to the Roshan. Now the MP Tornado following this one up with the counter. Tornado comes out from EGM. Bulldogs trapped and sprouts himself inside the pit. Looks to run away. Arcsile cancels that. First track kill that came to Navi, and the whole team's here, and Loda is still completely a non factor of this fight. It begins with the general bat after an awful start. They look to steal the road while also killing the big fish. They've gotten three. They've gotten a four hero track kill. And now it's Navi trying to snatch an Aegis right away from Alliance who double buyback to prevent this. Navi may just walk away. They've gotten a lot out of this already. I say walk away. Navi says run in twice as hard. They move forward. Dendi fishing with the tornado. EMP on the Loda. Has no mana. Absolutely drained. Can't even amp the Roche. Radiant's bottom Man, Betty Rogar's not getting a blink now. <laughs> Sitting on the high ground must have just been agonizing for him to. And it was watch. a very slow death. And Navi not picking up any sentries. They really need these wolves to be able to freely scout out Roche, but in all that hectic <laughs> happenings, I don't really blame them. It's, it's Lotus' turn to have a, a pretty rough going here. Last game it was Dit Yara, but Roshan is... No team really wants to leave that pit. Dire has the amp. Radiant has Lycan with the Vladimir's offering. And, and they it's have, gonna be taken down. And they have Quaswex Invoker. It's just so good at zoning around there. And now Batrider has uh, his lasso up again. Supernova not quite off cooldown. Alliance still hanging around the pit. I think more worried about Navi taking than about even trying to go for themselves. Loda, gotta be careful here. It would be a 13 minute dieback if General grabs him. He goes for EGM though. Loda's gonna have to pursue him out, but the wolves surround him. That's a track kill again. Navi finding big kills here. The gold is gonna add up. Rather rapidly at that, they've now tracked Loda. They're just waiting for that crush to come out before they fully commit, but he's getting cold snapped down into submission. Navi have gotten a second kill. Now they want to disengage as four chases forward on the Dendi. We'll find the counter kill here. They might get the like it as well. Arcsile burning to the Sunray. Ake okay, should be able to finish him off. That's going to be a two for two with Navi getting track kills. Does anyone get Roche off of this? Alliance are suffering heavy economical damage though. Two buybacks, and then now they're falling behind because of trout kills. Even if they get the Roche, I would still think that Navi has come out ahead in the past five minutes' time. Navi unable to snag that T1. They wanted that T1 so they could feel much better about taking down that Roshan. And the Wolves keep on marching in. Sentries are here, but Navi just keeping tabs around the pit. And this General. time though, General has no lasso. Nobody really in position, but as I say that, four Navi heroes are moving forward. They are going to look to contest this. Not even a flame break available. Tower going down freely to the Radiant. They're just so hell-bent on this Roshan who claps the lion. He is displeased with the number of occupying forces. This is my pity, says, get out of here. They're trying to heal him up. 
There's the Sunray from Ake, but Navi converge on it. There's the swoop through, trying to jump forward. General leaping into the pit. S4 is going to grab the Aegis. It is the dire last hit, so so far, so good for Alliance. At long last, they get that road, but they lose Loda again. Out for 40. It's up to S4 to turn this. He gets swapped back in. The rest of the team, Navi didn't seem to be expecting as They were all heading the other way, but they cracked the Aegis. They move forward. Do they chase for additional kills? They're very low at this point. And S4, he's angry with how things have gone. Blinks up onto the high ground. Shadow strikes Dendi. Looking for the follow-up kills here. Two have fallen. So they get more. Bulldog chases. Stops the Midas to creep. And that'll be that. Oof. Thought he was really close to hitting a blind scream. Coming up from S4. Yeah, actually got clipped by the, the ghost walk slow there as he moved in and just didn't end up finding the angle and not enough resources left. I think for that first bout, they had a couple of cells, a couple of clarities, just in case there was a very extended fight, but they didn't think that it was going to last another two minutes. And not enough resources left in General's arsenal. They did at least immediately get rid of the Aegis. So overall, considering that Alliance were looking to take it for free, still seems decent for Na'Vi, but Alliance do regain some footing now off of that. We see a first Oblivion staff for S4. So far, the leader overall in net worth. Although Bulldog is on a more of a traditional Bulldog carry here for game three. The biggest loser was Loda. I think he had his Vanguard and Treads maybe six minutes ago, and he's just evened out in net worth over the last six minutes time. And he wasn't able to... Nowhere near a blink. Yeah. It's absolutely a dream at this point for Loda. Dream deferred. Yeah, Deer. they really struggled last game with S4 falling behind him. This game, it might be the same story with Loda. Yeah, but was... there's NP there. Yeah, there, there's a Midas NP. But as we talked about, it's, it's not like the easiest nature's profit game. Bulldog is going to have to play his pants off to, to avoid giving up kills later on. The Wex is leveling up. Dendi has gone for the Midas. So he'll scale well into the late game. If it goes to that, and especially since he's got track gold as well, getting those additional levels, keeping up his farm. What do you expect from the Invoker next? Is it definitely an Orchid game? He he has purchased that casual reign of regen for now. I thought it was going to be Orchid, but he's not doing that well. I actually think it might have been better for him to go Quas Exhort. We at, saw at a, this point. We saw. I think it was MP when Quas Wex into a, a Mech one game. He actually got the Mech before the Midas. So any, any, any chance of a mech here? I think the armor is very useful versus the versus the Stardar. And they've been team fighting a lot. They're likely to continue team fighting because of the bounty hunter and Lycan. I think it'd be, now be, be well show, justified. Showing to mid wall simultaneously coming on the top side and they last West 4. He generally actually drags himself back into Loda, who gets up the crust, trying to rev up for the Sonic Wave, but he's totally chained stun. Walks down. Loda next. Loda will fall. That is two gigantic kills for Navi, who also managed to take down the tower mid in this time, it was denied by Bulldog. A consolation prize, but very much consolation. The real prize was those skills. Yeah, General's Bat Rider has just been a completely different story as soon as he got his Blink Dagger. He had a terrible start, too. Gives up first blood, level 3 when Loto was 6, but man, has he turned it around. And Bond on the bottom lane, Bulldog getting chased down. Oh, this is another track guild. No escape for Bulldog. It's not going to be an easy game for him. And Navi show why the matchup is very difficult for Nature's Prophet. And all three cores on Alliance are suffering now. Before it was only Loda. Now it's Nature's Prophet committing for the split push build with a minus to a scepter. Queen of Pain just won Oblivion Staff to her name. They need to keep up their items. They're still doing decently compared to the counterparts of Navi, but... How do you regain your footing if you're Alliance? Get Blink on Slaughter and get more kills. They're gonna smoke. Don't have the Blink yet, but... They do have an Orchid soon to come for S4. He... The Ru Rubik also needs a decent amount of form so he can counter-initiate the Batrider. Slaughter's cast point is generally just not quick enough and he doesn't have a Blink, but Rubik's cast point is really fast and they can pull someone back after they get lassoed. Oh, I, I brought up the idea of the, the late Invoker mech, but forget about that. You've got Seneku who's already managed to get one. 19 minutes. And while that was going on, Dire Courier does get sniped here. So more gold. Probably the Bounty Hunter who killed it. So, looks like maybe Alliance just trying to spread the spread out the map a lot. If they do incur casualties, hopefully it won't be too many for them. The Wolves are scouting. Navi on the prowl. But they're a bit slow here. 
Getting eyes on EGM, seeing the whole alliance retreat. This could set up for Dendi. Does he hit a big tornado? That could start a really key fight. Just catching the Rubik for now, who steals Coast Walk. EGM will walk away. Nice play from EGM. Dropping the Stunter Ward to know that they were going to scout out with the Lycan Wolves first. Yeah, it still attacks, though. And one of the, I think, slightly forgotten things about Lycan is just how much map control it gives you, not only from the pushing aspect of the hero, but from the scouting the Wolves bring. And I don't think they'll be in a position to carry a gem for quite some time to come. Not to mention gold could be an issue here. Alliance don't have track unless EGM manages to steal that. Which is possible the way he's been playing on Rubik this tournament. And now Necro 3 up on Dinira, ensuring some more map control out for Na'Vi. General hunting. Already has the four staff up to another 1300 gold. You can just see from his movements that he, he feels like he's in control of this game. He can fish deep for kills, take some risks. And while he's doing that, they're layering in some additional vision. Seneko plopping down a ward that scouts out Alliance farming their own woods. S4 blinking in. I think might have gotten a glimpse of him there. The whole team reacts to it. But Bulldog doesn't. Bulldog stays bottom. He looks to push that lane out. The real clash likely to happen here top. This general waits in the wings. Alliance are playing a little scared though. But... Definitely feels. Scared. I think it's just what they like to do. It's the uh, let's just split push and taunt, which is what <laughs> Admiral Bulldog was doing. <laughs> no cooldown on that, apparently. Has gone for the axe. So is this like full rat mode here? Do you go Octarine? We've seen him even go Octarine Refresher very early. I think they just want to pressure the bat and the bounty hunter to be forced to split push out lanes as opposed to look for kills because that's that's what they're best at and they're not that great at pushing out lanes especially with bad rider not having the boots to travel up so if they're forced to do that they're not getting track gold they're not using one of the main points of their lineup i just worry for alliance when navi want to pursue roshan number two yeah navi are taking the complete opposite approach. Where Alliance want to split push with the Nature's Prophet, they want a five-man. They have a Crimson Guard on art style. Yeah, how do you and they have farm that? Track, I guess. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. As well as the mech on the Bounty Hunter. So it really looks like Navi just want to rush at Alliance and take head-on fights. An old wolf in the back will scout out. Alliance is positioning just outside the vision of the Sentry Ward, so they know exactly where they are, and if they were smoked, they'd be in for quite a rude surprise. But it will scout out the fresh new blink on the Slardar, so they won't get caught off guard by that. They are grouping up here. They get down a deep ward, but it's under a dire Sentry, and Alliance are going to immediately smoke and move in. They're looking for the jump here. Who do they get first? Loda with on the crunch to start this thing off, and now General going for the deep last one. S4, can they burst the Mech Queen of Pain? It's so important, he chucks out the ult, but it's as he dies with his last breath. They're already down to Queen of Pain and a Phoenix. They've gotten nothing out of this fight so far. And Alliance losing three in the end, and blowing a buyback on the Phoenix, while Navi still look to push. Great. Illusion control by Invoker, but that's a critical mistake by Loda. The Invoker illusions don't have any orbs on them. It's quite obvious that they are not the real Invokers. And after that happened, Navi just swooped in. Looking a bit bleak for the head-on fights right now for Alliance. Yeah, I, again, they're looking for head-on fights when I don't think they should be. Nature's Prophet with his axe just split push out the lanes. Sure, you're going to lose a tower here and there, but unless they're knocking on your tier threes, then they don't need a hard commit to a defense. And looking for more skirmishy fights, perhaps around the Roshan pit, with the help of the egg, with Queen of Pain being very good around that pit, and need more items to deal with Navi's lineup. A little bit more armor, maybe a Lincoln's to deal with the Batrider, BKB to deal with the Invoker. They are just not in fighting shape right now. Still need time for Admiral Bulldog to get those lanes pushed out for that minus to kick in. And Navi, all they want to do is fight now. They actually have level two track already. Oh, Sineko General. Moving down bottom to a debut. That level two track S4 has been scouted out here. Tornado going to catch him. They've gotten the track on him. That's a big bucket of gold for Navi. I think three heroes in range for that. And it's a long time on the sidelines, but Alliance are split pushing here. Bulldog 
in the mid lane with Loda at his side, Phoenix working on top. Still though, these track kills are really gonna add up. That one alone was almost 1300. In general, with that early gem pickup, looking to ruin any of Alliance's vision on their side of the map and limit the area that Nature's Prophet can farm, but Emerald Bulldog feeling, feeling very comfortable near the Radiant Secret Shop, knowing that Navi's around the Roshan pit. They do move on to General here. They catch him out. That gem is crucial, but he four steps away, and now Navi may look to chase as they were completing Roshan at the same moment. Oh, Bulldog barely making out the Flame Break just a second late. And Dendi also chasing for more. So Navi... They have their cake. They don't get to eat it too, but they come damn close there. Yeah, Alliance were like, the best out of a bad situation where S4 was down and Navi were surely in the pit, hoping for a three on one gang up. Stendi will work towards the Orchid now, it looks like. Gets the Oblivion Staff. I think just bought the second. So he's closing in on something that will set up for even more kills and BOTs now. Online for General, hunting for Bulldog, the long range tornado comes out, they will actually clip, and they're gonna go for this one. Lasso Dragging Bulldog back, he thought he was safe, he was at his tier two, but it's under your tower, where Navi will die if you kill you. This time they won't take the tower too, but they're coming for that next. I don't think Navi has banned out Aegis Prof in any of these games, and clearly showing that they can, they're can they more than able to handle it. It almost feels like it was a trap for Alliance with the way this game is going. And now, yeah, the Wex from Invoker really paying off with that tornado. Jeez. Yeah, we, we worried a little bit about the, the burst damage and the default for kills. coming in. Mid lane. Oh, just on the move. Got him. Got him indeed. <laughs> that's, that's just Navi marking their territory. Mid lane is ours, they say. So Alliance, if, if Bulldog is getting punished like that split pushing, he's at his tier two. What's the adjustment? Because they, they can't sit back, right? Surely at that point, Navi's just going to walk out mid. I think they can take a team fight once they get a BKB or two. Queen of Pain's still quite vulnerable. And that's a big window for Dendi. He has an Orchid, and Queen of Pain does not even have her hammer yet. So, Ake could get picked off. Actually, anyone can get picked off oh, from Alliance now. not again. POT level 2s are out already. 27 minutes in. This is truly not the secret weapon. It is, but it's not so much of a secret a anymore. This is, this is the extermination squad. The mouse traps will be set. Will Bulldog try to eat the cheese? Maybe not as useful as last game because they do have the Lycan Wolves to TP on, but Lycan, you know, sometimes you just want to farm with those Wolfies. And they may even just be pushing a lane straight up, and that's where the Bounty Hunter or the Invoker could be the ideal place to deploy. Navi creeping in towards the Ancients. They're going to look to unveil this thing momentarily. Alliance are very halting and nervous. They said something's up. They back out. They have a newly acquired gem on oh. the GM, so uh, Here we go. Oh, <laughs> good reactions there by Ake. That is going to debut the uh, the BOT level 2s. Instead, they chase on the EGM here. General may go for him instead. The track comes out. They're literally diving him to the tier 3 tower. Where's my team, says EGM? Oh, they're not there. That's for damn sure. Aki dies as well. Two down. But the team, they're split pushing. And Working that's on top the long of gem. Our style with EGM's gem in his inventory. That's a heavy blow to Alliance. They are, they're trying for the trades here, Ben. But track's already starting to come out up on the top side of the map. Loda. Eats a, a shuriken, does have to back away. <laughs> None of these trades really seem to be working out thus far for Alliance, but is, is there really anything else they can do? Like, can they come home and fight in that situation? Rely on the split push from Prophet. That's about all they can do at this point until they get BKBs. As Ford did not die in that recent skirmish. Just a couple hundred away from that BKB. He closes in on it. But while he does, then he continues to hunt. Oh, just missing on Bulldog. I'm worried about the damage output. Or, or did he? The wolf is scouting. The wolf is at Bulldog's door. Are they going to go for it? I think I got a glimpse of him there. The Dendi's dancing back. Looks like the rest of Alliance headed towards the bottom side of the map. Sitting behind Loda for now. Maybe waiting for the BOT 2s up on Batrider. It's up in 15 seconds. Once they get a scout out with Invoker, they can get a kill. And yeah, now we know at this point that the track kills mean so much that they don't have to try to force them too much. Just one or two will 
continue to snowball that gold graph their way. They get another big item to break the base. They now have pretty much every big pushing item aside from a pipe, I believe. Drums, Vlads, AC, Necrobook, Crimson Guard, Mech. This team is devastating in five man. They're gonna start it off by chipping away at Loda here. The Slardar is instantly forced to run. He goes back the other way and he still gets lassoed. That's another track kill. Navi raking in the gold at this point. Every kill probably bordering on like 1,500 to 2,000 in net worth swing. And finally, Nature Prophet will get a brief respite and can push out that top lane, but doesn't really mean that much. Invoker, Bat Rider, Bounty Hunter constantly scouting out for kills, even the wolves coming out from Ditya Ra. And no one from Alliance can really feel safe for more than a minute at a time. They are feeling the pressure. Hugging the base, running as a pack, Navi hunting as a pack. Total polar opposite play here. Even Bulldog just hiding in the trees. He had to go for a four step even, just in hopes of being able to live from some of these ganks. Navi taking objectives now. Dityara mowing down towers. That is the second to last tier two, matching Alliance more or less as far as the push goes. And even more five man from the items for Navi. Reeves up on the bounty hunter, four step on the Venge. It's not really like a traditional team fight lineup, Ben, but they have so many five-man items that it basically is one anyway. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, Lycan is above the Nature Prophet in Network, and this is like a very farm-heavy build coming off of Bulldog. So that, that's really scary, because Lycan just does not have the mobility. Well, he does now with the BOTs. Yeah, probably BOT level 2 is being <laughs> off. Too bad you can't ban items against its teams in Dota 2. And they're trying the usual scouting tricks with the Nature's Prophet Treants, but it doesn't really work against the Ghostwalk Invoker, the, nor the Wolves, nor the Bounty Hunter. The thing that's really cool about the strategy from Navi is like, we've seen teams that kind of like with Lifestealer and Fest where they waste a lot of time inside an ally or creep, they're not farming. You could fall behind in that orc. When you have the Bounty Hunter, you get one kill. It makes the whole like three minutes of running around completely worth it. Right. Usually it's like, okay, we can sacrifice the EGM, but this game, you don't want to sacrifice anyone. And Treants is still trying to scout out. Not sure if they saw the Ghost from Denny, but surely they will see him now. Even Art Style is getting in on the roam. A lonely Venge on a jaunt through the trees. Now what does he see? He sees Bulldog. Four step into a swap. POTs are coming. Bulldog four steps himself right into the waiting arms of the general, who promptly complies by lassoing and almost killing them. He is going to get the kill in the end. Dendi, though, is in a bit far. Yule steps there onto the Queen of Pain. Today goes arrive. Reinforcements coming in. Hard and fast for Navi. Charging towards S4. They kill off the egg. They kill off S4. They move on the loader. They're mowing them down. Alliance drop four. It's a wipe. Navi just completely. Completely wrecking them! You could not leave a Lycan unchecked like that in a team fight with all his minions running around and that amazing display of coordination from Navi all facing and just it, killing that Phoenix. It all started with Avenge with an Invis rune and within 15 seconds all five heroes are there. Yeah, and that's your highest network hero gone. S4 is not even that close to Nature's Prophet. But no damage coming out of the team fight. They had to blow everything to kill the Invoker. Navi. After the way this series began, losing game one. Game two, feeling like it was Alliance in the driver's seat, pushing in all the lanes, free farm Naga Siren, ratting it up and completely out map controlling them. They dragged that game two back. They got Megas, they gave up two lanes of Rax, then managed to force out the GG. They cleanly sweep through two full lanes of Rax here at the 34 minute mark and leave Alliance's hopes of advancing hanging by a mere thread. I think Art Style has really impressed me with this farm in this entire series, being third on Navi's team in games one and two. And he's almost the same net worth as the Queen of Pain in this game. <laughs> Hurricane Pike Venge already. That's gonna be fun. Downy Hunter Dota. So we do see the Dire Courier flying out. Now it looks like a completed Meowner picked up. I mean, at this point, Alliance, they're, they're very committed to not fighting. So Bulldog gets more split push here. Perhaps later on can throw this on the Slardar. But Navi getting the bigger items. There's a BKB on Bat, and Ben, how do they deal with that? There's no counter for a BKB Lasso. They have no swap. They have no purge the Lasso. 
they can't stun the Batrider. It's already been free kills. I kind of like what the panel said last game. It's like, yeah, you can split push all you want, but eventually you're going to have to win a big team fight. And Alliance don't seem like they're geared up for that eventual team fight that they have to win. Just constantly dodging and dodging and dodging. But what happens when Na'Vi are pushing up your T3 with Aegis, Cheese, with DKBs? How are they going to take it? Well, we're about to find out. They mow down the Roshan. Dityara with 4,300 gold bank. Dendi grabbing the nags. Aegis into the Lycan's inventory. They can get that Abyssal Blade now. And you don't even want to look at this gold graph. As you look at it like five times. <laughs> you don't want to look at it. <laughs> oh, avert your eyes. This is not family-friendly entertainment right now. Especially not for the Alliance fans. But it is happening, whether you try to cover your children's eyes or not. And Na'Vi continue to make things happen. The BKB debut, the Molasses on S4. Going to get that kill as well. Flyken chopping at him, but can't finish him off there. Pretty good counter initiation from the Phoenix of Ake to hang on and look to turn this fight still, though. He holds the Aegis. Alliance need a lot more than just a Bounty Hunter kill to really turn this game around. They desperately race through the trees. They're looking for that bat, but he escapes to the north. He roams. He TPs, and he is going to make it out. That's all they get after all that. A sick play by Ake, and that's them a Bounty Hunter kill. And they still have the Aegis. And they're Lycan. actually going, they're going high ground into this. Alliance feeling like borderline desperate at this point. Creeps are actually hitting tier four towers. They're committing hard to this push, but Na'Vi are ready for it. Art style engaging forward. Loda trying to set, set up the follow up here to the Queen of Pain ult that comes in. Diving pretty far for this one, but Ditya Ra just auto attack him in regular werewolf form is going to get the kill. S4 almost dies to his claws. Ake's there. So much delicious food, but Gemrol's in too deep. He will end up dropping. Bulldog looks to try to wait. It's like an ult number two, and he's off to the races here. Can Alliance TP out? Who's got one? They're all going to need him. EGM has one, but he can't even get it off as he's about to fall to the wolves. They munch him up. They kill off the bird too. Alliance just can't handle Ditya Ra beyond godlike. Nobody can kill this man. And even after all that, Alliance, another 1,200 gold swing against them. He is deceptively tanky with 29... He didn't even lose Aegis. Yeah. 29 armor. He has a fair amount of block from the Abyssal Blade. <laughs> they couldn't touch him. He's just going to heal himself up as he marches down top. I think While Alliance, Dendi is Alliance looking for kills. Super desperate at the late. The Batrider... No, I don't know if he needs it. Dendi might be able to kill Bulldog off on his own. He's going in there, laying into the dog. He pops him there. An easy grab. Orchid working its magic. So many heroes. That He's doing that with a gem, by the way. He is diving their base solo while bearing the gem. Dendi does not care because he knows the team can come. BOTs are up. Batrider also going to join the fray. Navi parading towards top. This could be the death march. Confidently looking to strut up on the high ground. Rupik will buy his own gem. And General Hunt, he gets Loda. Drags him in again. It's another track kill, but Navi don't need gold. They just need dead bodies to litter this map so they can wipe each Alliance and the rest of them off. And they get the second kill here. Rubik down, already bought the gem. Doesn't have to buy back. Loda buys back, but he only crushes Sineko. And it feels like this is how it ends for Alliance. Not with a bang. This is a whimper. This is ugly. Even a Sunstrike massacring Alliance. Running them down. This is not family friendly at all. And there it is. GG. You give out Navi every last one of their signature heroes. And they just run circles around Alliance. I heard you call them EG at the end. I was like, dang, don't put them down like that, LZ. <laughs> EGM. <laughs> EGM. Ugly. Ugly way to finish the series for Alliance. Felt like they could have taken a 2 0. And you got to give credit to Navi. They they had an entire game plan built around the Bounty Hunter track gold, and they executed it to perfection here. Yeah, General's Batrider really showing his strength right there, and certainly to get a huge morale boost after that game number two. Is it time to start banning Boots of Travel 2 against Navi? <laughs> that is the real question heading into day three of the Manila Major. And the crowd is on their feet as they watch Dendi and the rest of Navi walk out from their booth. They live to fight another day here in the lower bracket. It was not easy, though. This is not a team that made it simple. They had to work. They had to claw to take this game, Ben, but take it they did. And with that, to wrap up the day, to talk more about the Navi survival story, it's back to the battle.